This explosion of debt is unconscionable and unsustainable. Mr. President, we will not let you bankrupt this great nation. When your country is in a costly war and our nation is facing a debt crisis at home, being asked to pay your fair share isn't class warfare, it's patriotism. Rand Paul and Cory Booker fired up their respective conventions. They join our roundtable this morning. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul joins us. Also author of a new book called Government Bullies. Newark Mayor Cory Booker also... Is the, the book about uh, New Jersey politics? <laughs> <laughs> the, the debate is already beginning. Cory Booker of Newark, also the co-chair of the Democratic Platform Committee, joining George Will Cokie Roberts, Paul Krugman of the New York Times in Princeton. And, George, let's talk about Paul Ryan first. I'm going to get to the conventions later. But uh, you saw him jump right on that jobs report. Uh, probably the best news the Republicans had in a couple weeks. The two numbers he stressed deserve stressing again. 368,000 people dropped out of the job market which means that for every job created, four people quit looking for jobs. What this means is if the workforce participation rate today were what it was in June 2009 when the recovery began, we would have an unemployment rate of 11.2%. If you add in the involuntarily unemployed, you're approaching 19%, which is why I should think from here on in on the basis of these numbers, the Romney campaign slogan should be the title of Paul Krugman's book which is end right. this depression now, because these are depression-level numbers. And if the Republican Party cannot win in this environment, it has to get out of politics and well, find another yeah, yeah, no, I think the thing, can't. I think the thing you need to bear in mind is that this is not President Obama's policies at work. Right? Last year, Obama had a, a bill, the American Jobs Act, that independent analysts said would have added 1.2, 1.3 million jobs by now. It was, of course, gotten nowhere in Congress. So you have this amazing two-step where the Republican Party blocks all of Obama's proposed policies and then says, look, his policies aren't working. That's, that's, a, that's, hell of, that's a hell of a technique to use know, in, in know, politics. There's a fundamental disagreement between uh, whether we should put the money in the productive sector, which is the private sector, or put it in the non-productive sector, the government sector. Those who want to have government stimulus, they don't understand what Milton Friedman said. Milton Friedman said something that is so true. Nobody spends someone else's money as wisely as they spend their own. So there's an efficient sector to the economy, which is the private sector. That's where you want the money if you want growth. But well, isn't it true right now that the private the... sector is creating jobs and the public, right. all the jobs and, cuts and are going to... Yeah, so, so one of the places where the public sector is... A private, the public sector is losing jobs big time is in education. Right. And that is really so short-sighted, I, I can't even begin and end with it. If we're not educating our kids, then our future economic growth is really at, at risk. And so it's just... It's it's just dumb. Let me echo that. I mean, look, the uh, the Eisenhower campaign, Republican, uh, with the Eisenhower Highway Act, those are great jobs that produce a return on investment that our trucking companies and other businesses are still using right now. And that's an unfair characterization of the numbers. I dropped out of the workforce. I dropped out of the labor force when I was 18 years old because I went to Stanford University and went to college. People are dropping out of the labor force not only because of going to college. Let me also but, but, so, the, so the numbers, let's not talk about the numbers. This is, the can, this, this is a president who's created 4.5 million jobs. He's had 30 straight months of job creation. Uh, we are on the road to recover. Please do not forget that we were losing 700 fifty thousand jobs when this guy entered the, entered roads into office. Don't, roads don't create business success. It's the other way around. Business success allows us to build roads. And, but building and, more and, roads... And I'm, not, I'm not arguing with that. It's just not an either or. Here. We need both. Paul right. and then George. Yeah, right now Mitt Romney has an ad blitz where he's accusing Obama of cutting defense spending, which is actually, you know, it's, that's a, uh, not really true. But, and then he says, and the reason this is terrible is because it will eliminate jobs. So the Romney campaign's position is government spending can't create jobs unless it goes to defense contractors, in which case it's the lifeblood of the economy. That's an inconsistency. That's an inconsistency. Pretty major. <laughs> and it's wrong. They are accepting Keynes with regard to military Weaponized spending. Weaponized Keynesianism. But, but not, but not with yeah, regard right. to and the this George Will. With, with regard to the education cuts, for several decades now, we have been expanding education employment and that's not just teachers there's an enormous administrative overhead as you know yes we've been expanding them much faster than enrollment has been expanding therefore there is room for some cutting back even in education second Bill Clinton took 50 minutes because he needed every one of them to give all the excuses as to why these programs haven't worked you know someone once said Paul Trotsky 
proof of Trotsky's farsightedness is that none of his predictions have come true yet. <laughs> All of Mr. I mean, Mr. Obama gave a lot of hostages to Fortune with his predictions of how his stimulus would work, and Fortune shot the hostages. That was one, you know, one document that was released by his economists without a lot of thought early well, on. Yeah, it's been, a, it, but no. The fact of the matter is, all of us who are serious about the numbers, me for example, uh, warned from the beginning that this <laughs> thing was going to be inadequate. <laughs> this has come out pretty much the way that the analysis that under, underlay the program uh, said it was going to turn out. And as I say, the, you know, Obama had um, a, a filibuster-proof majority for a few months in 2009. Ever since, ever before yeah, and after, he's faced scorched earth reason, opposition. But there's, there's a reason that they lost in 2010, which is the people weren't happy with the, what we well, was going on. You, and so, you know, it's, you can't but separate you can't, those you cannot run But it is this. also true that the, um, the reason, one of right. the reasons that we're seeing this slowdown is that businesses are not sure what's going to happen not because sure. of this fiscal cliff that is oh, okay. we are facing. But, but who and that, that? Exactly. The and that is there because is you're people arguing are not... That the government sector is struggling? Are you arguing that there are fewer government employees under Obama than there were under, under Bush? That's, that's a fact. No, that's I a think the size fact. of growth of government is enormous under if, President if, Obama. If government employment had grown as fast under Obama as it did under Bush, we'd have a million and a half more people employed right now directly. Just are there directly. less people employed or more people employed now by the, government? I want to attack this idea of the certainty of, of for small business. This is a president who's cut taxes on small businesses 18 different times. He's done enough to target uh, incentives to small businesses, everything to hire our men and women coming home, uh, in addition to the fact to uh, giving them breaks for investment. So, so I disagree with that on small business, but I think it's more important, and I really want to call the question that Paul Ryan left wide open, is how can you call for $5 trillion worth of tax cuts? Give us no specific this is Paul Ryan, who used to be a man of substance, who put up plans. I may have disagreed with some of them, but with great levels of specificity. Now they say they're going to cut $5 trillion in taxes, increase spending in the military, and somehow not dig us in a deeper deficit budget. Yes, uh, deficit. Bill Clinton and arithmetic. I'm going to disagree respectfully. He was never a man of substance. This is who he always was. <laughs> well, well, that was always an illusion. But how about right. the question, Senator Paul, let me bring this to you. Governor Bob McDonald of Virginia said, told the Washington Post today, the final strategy for Romney Ryan is bolstering the credibility of their plan and can they do that without more details? Well, I think it ultimately comes down to who do you think is better attuned to help business in this country to grow and get more jobs. And I would think that would be someone who created jobs like Governor Romney. But I think what we're seeing now, I just finished reading Am Amity Schley's The Forgotten Man, and she talks about how business was terrified of the president. Benjamin Anderson was another writer about the Great Depression, and in that he said, the continuing disquieting utterances of the president. That's what we have as a president who so vilifies business that business is afraid no, I'm to sorry. do anything. I'm sorry. You can't have a, a president that's going to get elected on just, trust me, you need to see the facts. And right now they've given no facts, but we're going to cut loopholes. Well, if I'm an American sitting back right now and say, well, wait, wait a minute, are you going to cut loopholes on carried interest and other things that are indefensible in corporate and Wall Street? Or are you going to cut my home, home mortgage uh, deduction? Or are you going to cut my earned income tax well, credit? Uh, who's going to get these, gonna get these tax uh, loophole cuts? That's the question. They should be answering it. They're not giving specifics on their well, plan. Because, because it never works. Uh, you know, uh, when you start to get into those kinds of tax deductions, uh, there's a reason that they're still there. Mm -hmm. which is that any time that you start to attack them, the public goes crazy. And it's not just big lobbyists in Washington. It is individuals who have home um, mortgage deductions. It's, it's right, universities so are you help the and other class? charitable are you help institutions. We're going to have tax cuts that are going to be benefiting them. the wealthy, and there that's is, the question. And there is an argument that one of the reasons the, the New Deal failed at its great objective of putting the country back to work, unemployment never came below 14 percent until we geared up to be the arsenal of democracy, was that capital went on strike, as the senator said, because of uncertainty. But there is uncertainty surrounding the Romney-Ryan tax cut plan because they have not specified the deductions that will be closed, and we know where the big money is. Mortgage interest deductions, charitable deductions, taxing as compensation, which it is, employer-provided health insurance, and state and local taxes. All of those, you either hit only the rich, in which case you don't get much money, or you hit the middle class. And the other thing, guys, is, you know, during the Great Depression, we raised taxes five years in a row, and it was a disaster, and it extended the Great Depression. It made the recession into a Great Depression because we kept raising taxes. What does President Obama want to do? 
raise no, taxes, take money not, out of the productive debt, economy as, and give it to the non-productive economy. In the 80s when we had aggressive tax cuts, and of course in the Bush years, debt as percentage of GDP went way up. This is a record we've heard over and over again. Five trillion dollars worth of tax, tax breaks, let's increase military spending, oh, we're going to get out of this. No, this is the thinking that got us in the problem in the first we gotta place. we got to take a break. Thank